Here comes the uh, overlay. Ready for the sound, guys? Gratiam, low team one in game number four. One apiece. Wait, game number four? Yes, game number four. The first game was a draw. Yes, the first game. I believe also that's a first, that the first game didn't go well for the team. But we're going to see a massive lineup change here from Gra because they are unhappy with their performance so far. And they're like, hey, 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 guys, guys, really? 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 We cannot be losing like this. We need to change this side up. We, we're just not winning. We've got two games left. We want to win them both. Uh, will Gra TM with the new lineup change get to 3-2? Sorry, 3-1? Or will they not be as successful and actually lose the game with Low um, taking them out? We have Missy Rock going into the middle, driving the T fifty dash two. Missy Rock was obviously driving the T seventy one beforehand. I wonder if he feels much more comfortable in the T fifty dash two. Things going off down in the uh, far side, but we hear some shots going down. Uh, was that the T-50 actually firing? I think it was against Lucky Russia, but no shots connected. For people who don't know why we're looking at one side of the battle, not both, you need two PCs to be able to have uh, both views, and I only have one, I'm afraid. And uh, to get another one that will run the uh, streaming software, well, actually, World of Tanks and Max Graphics, will cost me two or three hundred pounds, probably, because uh, I won't need monitors and stuff like that for it, although that will help. <laughs> but also the streaming card and all that sort of jazz will cost quite a bit and I, I can't really afford or justify it right now but soon hopefully I can uh, get that on the budget and we can see both sides every time Nothing happening again uh, with Gra taking this set lineup change. I expected a bit more aggressive behavior from them, but nothing's going on. They're not sure what they're doing. And Misty Rock has actually been heading, hurting backwards back into the cap circle to see if we're going to see the same strategy from League of Liberty. Now, actually, I'm going to look at the position of the artillery. Are they looking back into their base? Do they expect League of Liberty to already be in their base? Or are they? No, they're not. They're actually aiming in random locations probably the entrance here to the abbey just in case someone is spotted so they can do a double hit onto them there and there we go we heard we heard the artillery shells going off can we see the explosion marks no but i swear it'll be around there somewhere oh they're looking for trees to go down but mystery rock has been ordered to go in and check out the base and we're going to see a move from him right now but also another ping with Armour Lee being forced round the bottom half of the map. And Mystery Rock goes up and comes straight down just in case someone was there. But it doesn't look like there is. It's very interesting again that League of Liberty are deciding to play ultra defensively. Even with the Lorraine 15551 backing them up. You thought they could be a bit more aggressive. Uh, especially with their scouts to try and get some great artillery shells. And considering Scott just joined the chat, hello Scott, um, do you want to hear about the proximity scouting? <laughs> if for anyone who doesn't know, Scott's been at almost every cast, so shout out to him. Oh, but Minx falls off the rocks in the middle and almost drowns. That must be laughter in the team speak as Minx is actually really struggling to get across. Some shells coming in, but nothing's connecting against Red Gra here. And we're seeing Gra move into the middle with one down south, one up the north, uh, two in the middle, covering far from the west. They're splitting up now to try and find what the hell is going on with League of Liberty, as League of Liberty seem to be doing nothing. Four minutes in the game, and League of Liberty hasn't done anything, but uh, Pinocchio has gone down.
Lucky Russia dodges a few more shots from artillery as he is desperately trying to stay alive there. But what a fantastic shot here from the artillery. If you see how tight that shot was just there. Minx is proximity scouting. This is just for the viewer I just mentioned. Proximity scouting is where they spot them through the walls no matter where they are. And we are seeing them here doing that right now. Minx and Lucky Russia, both of them could be in danger considering where they've not seen where the GW is. And they could be even as far down as the bottom here as we see some action from League of Liberty at last as Russ and the T2 Light does head north and Straco takes some damage from Amelie up down in the south. I'm just puzzled by League of Liberty's decision to always play this passive. They've uh, not had great results with it so far in the league, and yet they continue to do so. Um, I guess it's just their main tactics, but the, the defensive tactics work against some teams, but most of the aggressive teams rip defensive tactics apart by taking control of the map and making them fight on their terms. We're just not seeing Gra do that. After the first game, uh, bringing it to a draw, the second game was taken quite easily by Gra once they actually decided to make a move. And then Liga Liberty brought it back with a very good shot from uh, Cassius Clay, knocking out one of the uh, Gra TM tanks very early. Miss you rocking the T-71. So, we... I expected Gra to be way more aggressive than this. But uh, they're deciding not to be. They're playing very, very, very passive. But Col um, Colento goes round the back and takes a lot of shells. And actually, we're going to see some action here. As Gras seems to be getting impatient and making their move. Lucky Russia must take some splash damage there. Only uh, losing a small amount of HP. But it's still, Minx is reloading, deciding that uh, firing off a couple of shells into nowhere uh, to take out Strako was uh, enough and he has to get back to reload. Strako dying though down in the, uh, in the north was a great move there by Armour Lee and Cassius Clay. Sorry guys about this. Mm. Wasn't expecting to solo cast and I haven't had much sleep. <laughs> Armelie has spotted Liv for Surf, but Liv for Surf, although knowing he is spotted, hasn't spotted Armelie. Great decision making by Armelie not to take the firing, but now he's been spotted. The first shot goes off there by the artillery, but doesn't connect with Liv for Surf. Liv for Surf's checking down Armelie. First shot will go off and does hit. Armelie, if lucky, will not die for the second shot, but the second shot doesn't go off. If we get into a position where we can see the angles. We are seeing Mr. Crazy Bellcurt go around the corner to try and take a snapshot. No, the artillery takes the shot and does Lee, um, does miss, leaving Armalee alive, going around with only 200 HP. International 64, though, and Colento are ambushing um, Lucky Russia in the middle and takes Lucky Russia out. Mr. Crazy Belka though, and Live for Surf are spotted by Armalee, and Live for Surf are going to try and make something happen. But it looks like Gra have really taken control of this battle. Uh, whistling down League Liberty over the last eight minutes to the point where League Liberty haven't really done anything yet. They haven't been able to play aggressively because they've just been playing defensively. And Gra have been able to take advantage of the very few situations that they've been able to create. But Kalento is actually in trouble if Belka goes around the corner, but Belka decides not to. Instead to take some sniper shots there and take out the Bison of Armageddon. Live for Surf in the meantime has been packed by Armalee and Co. Oh, but the Lorraine is able to finish off his teammates. And that's International 64 going down in a big puff of smoke. Kalento now trying to take down Mr. Crazy Belka, doing some damage, but not enough. The Crazy Belka is backing off, trying to get back to the Lorraine, because they could still be able to pull off a draw here. And that's what League of Liberty will be going for, because one minute left on the clock, they clearly don't want to take the loss. But they might do. Two tanks in the cap circle will be enough to prevent... Yes, it will be. There will be no draw if these two do not get the reset against them. I do expect to see the um, artillery trying to reset the cap here. But they have just enough time to get the win. It's going to be incredibly close. 
I'm going to watch here as Cassius Clay makes random fire in. If a single shot from Cassius Clay glances either Minsk or Armalee, this will be a draw. And game four will be... <laughs> Still undecided. We're going to game five with just one apiece. Mr. Crazy Belka is trying to come back. He has nine seconds. Will he be intercepted by Kalento? One shot against him. Two shot against him, but missed. The, th the shot comes out from the Lorraine because Crazy Belka was a bit too late. And the victory it happens for Gra. That was close. One game left. It can still be a draw. Wow, okay, fair enough. We've seen Gra with the very, very last seconds of the game, with two seconds left on the clock, get a capture away from League of Liberty. Kind of reminds me how League of Liberty won their game, with the very last second being able to, no, Gra won their game, with the very last seconds just capturing again. The same things are happening. These two teams surprisingly evenly match. I would still say that Gra's performing on average just a little bit better, but both of them playing so passive it's not even funny. Uh, I, I don't know what to say about that. Uh, I would, I'm sure High Flyer would have something to say about the tactics used here today. But I am really surprised that um, Gra just isn't taking control of the battle and going ahead for victory. Because they could easily do it. Gra have the skill and they've proven that they can do the aggression tactics over and over again. Their first um, draw has been today. So they have shown that they are not the sort of team that does play defensively and goes for the draw. Uh, I will update the scores here and Gratiam take their second game. And. Oh. There we go. Gra takes their second game. And League of Liberty have only got one. I don't know why this doesn't update so quickly. And there we go. Will it update? Yes, it does. Wow, I'm impressed. With Gratiem taking their second game, it's all about League of Liberty trying to get the draw because they have not won today. The fifth game is coming up, and that will be the decider on who is taking the three points or if they're just going to take one. Sorry, it, who. If Gra will take home the three points or just one. So it's all about League of Liberty fighting for that one point, which is desperate for them. Later on today, we will see Aces versus Synergy, and hopefully by that point, I'll have loads of sugar in my system, and that Aces and Synergy are not campers. And I believe they're not. I've seen Synergy and Aces several times now, and both teams are very aggressive. We've seen their scores here, and uh, there are no draws in either of their lineups. We see Aces there with uh, seven wins, three losses, and we have Synergy with three losses and seven wins so very much the opposite so if we look at the games one aces does look the favorite but we do know that synergy have placed different people so you don't know how accurate that actually is ah dear oh dear how are you guys today i've been uh, following the chat as best as i can during the cast and you guys are talking about the chinese community do you know what? i don't know how big the community there is over in the asian server i should ask really because they are forming their pro league soon uh, i believe they're merging it obviously with the australians and that area there i was having a debate with one of their casters last night about what could make the viewing experience better for the audience and actually i want your opinion on it he claims and this is his main point that the uh, viewership would benefit from having a 742 um, system in the client so that you guys can form tank companies and play 742 yourself and i said i don't think that's the main reason i mean not just benefit i think that's a cool idea and you guys should definitely have that ability to you but you guys can always do that already in training rooms and i said i don't think that's the main reason the main reason that uh, a lot of people don't know these casts exists are because most people just play the game they don't read the form they don't read the news on the startup client but if it was in game you go in game and you're sat in your garage selecting your tank and there's a big button there saying live now watch the stream and it's blinking at you and it's saying the top teams come learn and loads of information around it that would attract viewers to say okay you can learn how to be a better gamer at World of Tanks by watching these streams and you can be entertained by it at the same time and that was what I said is the primary thing so what do you think is more important being able to play 742 format yourself 
which you can already in training rooms, but just more structure, like in the company battles under 742. Or do you would you rather play? Um, uh, sorry, have the client just show you the, the streams when they're live, the official streams when they're live. So they're the two options that we were debating. He claims one was definitely more than the others and wouldn't consider my option. And my argument against him was that he says that in every sport, the reason people can connect with watching the sport is because they can play the exact version that the pros are watching, but that's not the case in World of Tanks, which I disagreed with because obviously you guys can always start your training rooms up and face the other team if you so wish. And my argument was that in, in football, for example, on the playground, I mostly played football, three or four of us, so there'll be one goalkeeper and then it'll be all against all trying to score against the goalkeeper. You don't see, you don't see pro players doing that, it's always 11 versus 11. And the only time you ever see kids playing 11 versus 11 with one keeper aside is if teachers or organisers, adults, force the kids to and say, okay, put these jerseys on, put these jerseys on, you guys are facing each other, it's 11 versus 11, these are the rules. Your attackers, your midfielders, your defenders, and all you get is a big bunch of 11 or 10 kids running after the ball in one big group, and the rest of the field is completely empty. And that's what you get when kids play it. So I hasten to disagree with him on that basis alone, that you can play 742 if you like, you just choose not to because you'd rather play matchmaker. You know, you're not a pro. So you'd rather play matchmaker, and that's absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, you know, that's what I'd rather do as well. Um, but I like watching World of Tanks, obviously, being the main caster for the English community from the, on Star Ladder. Um, I like watching World of Tanks, but I don't necessarily want to play the 742 format. I'd rather just play normal matchmaker World of Tanks. It's the same mechanics. Everything works the same. The proximity scouting is the same as in the game. The, the scouting mechanics are all exactly the same. Um, the damage are all the same. The tanks are all the same. Everything is exactly the same. Like in football, the football is still the same. The players are still the same. And shooting the ball between two posts are still the same way to score a goal. And the person with the most goals still win. But there are extra rules that you just don't take into consideration. How many kids in the school um, playground play with offside, for example? No one. Pros do, though, and if you go into an organised event, they try to enforce it too. How many times have you played with just one goalkeeper? Loads of times. Do the pros do that? No. So it's up to you guys. I mean, that's my argument. He's not here to defend his argument, but his argument basically is that what well, I just counted. He says that you have to be able to play the exact version of the game that the pros are playing to appreciate what the pros are doing. And I disagreed. So it's up to you guys. Do you agree with me or do you agree with the uh, uh, Australian caster? I believe he's a water tanks caster. I think he's the ESL caster for Australia. So um, I want to hear your thoughts. I really, really do. Because I'll forward upon your opinions to the developers themselves to see if we can implement one or the other idea. Although I think both of them are cool, you've got to do them in a certain order.